the goal of step one is to make a daisy. We want to put four white edges around the yellow center. This is what step one looks like when it's completed. We have a yellow center and we have four white edges around the yellow center. We can disregard the corners for this step. Let's try an example. Find your yellow center. We want to put four white edges around the yellow center. Let's look around the Rubik's Cube for white edges. This is a white corner, so we don't need it for this step. Here's a white edge, and I can put it up next to the yellow center by turning this side up. I see here there are two white edges. I can put this one up next to the yellow center, and I can also put this one up next to the yellow center. Finally, here is my fourth white edge. I can finish this step by putting this up next to the yellow center, and there is my daisy. There are a couple things that might seem tricky, but I'm going to show you a few more examples. Here we have three white edges. I have a fourth white edge here, and I can put it up next to the yellow center by turning this side up. However, if I do that, I knock this edge out of place. In order to get around this, I can rotate the top so that when I put this white edge up next to the yellow center, nothing gets knocked out of the way. Here are three white edges. Here is my fourth white edge, and I can put it up next to the yellow center by turning it up this way. If I do this, the white edge faces the wrong way. Instead, what I need to do is I need to face the cube this way, and I need to put it up like this. However, if I do that, I knock away one of the white edges. So to get around this, I can turn the top so that nothing gets moved out of the way when I move the final white edge into place. Here are three white edges. My fourth white edge is here. I can put this next to the yellow center by moving this twice. If I do this, the white edge is facing the wrong way. To get around this, I need to take this out, and here you can see it's ready to go next to the yellow center. But I can't put it up right away. I need to first make sure that this white edge doesn't get taken out of position. So I rotate the top, which preserves the position of the three white edges that were already up there, and then I move the fourth one into place. In this last example, we have three white edges. The fourth edge is directly opposite of the yellow center. In order to put this next to the yellow center, we need to rotate the bottom so that the white edge is directly underneath an open slot. Then we can turn the right side twice and bring it up next to the yellow center and completing the step. Now that you're done with step one, or the daisy, I recommend that you turn off the DVD and practice this until you feel comfortable. When you're ready, you can go on to step two. Here is our daisy. We have four white edges around the yellow center. First, we need to pick one of the white edges. Here is a white edge. There are two stickers on this white edge. One is white, and the other one is red. The red right now is on top of the blue center. I need the red to be on top of the red center. I do this by turning the top until the red matches with the red center. Here, the red matches with the red center. Once it matches, I turn the front twice. Now I have three white edges around the yellow center. I repeat this process by first picking an edge. Here, green is on top of the blue center. I need green to be on top of the green center, so I rotate the top until green matches to the green center. Once they match, I turn the front twice. One, two. Now I have two white edges around the yellow center. I pick one of the white edges, and I see orange. But the orange is on top of the red center. So I turn the top until the orange matches to the orange center. 
Once it matches, I turn the front twice. One, two. Finally, I have one white edge next to the yellow center. This is blue, and it's on top of the green center. I turn the top twice to match the blue to the blue center. And now this matches, I turn the front twice. One, two. When you have no white edges around the yellow center, you should have a white cross. Notice that the white blue edge matches with the blue center, the white red edge matches with the red center, the white green edge matches with the green center, and the white orange edge matches with the orange center. Now that you're done with step two, you'll notice that it was easier than step one, but I still recommend you shut off the DVD and practice until you're comfortable. And when you're ready, feel free to go on step three. We're done with step two, and we have a white cross. The goal here is to solve the entire white side. In order to do this, we need to put four white corners into the bottom layer. Throughout the rest of this solve, make sure your yellow center is on top and your white cross is on bottom. I need to look for white stickers in the top layer that face me. Here is a white sticker, and it's on a corner. There are three stickers on this corner. One is white, one is red, and one is blue. I'm not worrying about the red one because it's on top next to the yellow center. Instead, I look to the side and I see the blue right now diagonally matches to a green center. I need the blue to diagonally match to a blue center. I do this by turning the top until the blue matches to the blue center. Here, the blue matches to the blue center. The blue is on the right side, so I'm going to do my first move. I'm going to move the right side up. I'm going to take my right index finger and pull the top towards me. And I'm going to move the right side back down. I need to do this three more times. First, I'm going to look for a white sticker that faces me in the top layer. Here's a white sticker that faces me. I look to the side, not on top, and see that I have an orange sticker that diagonally matches to a green center. I need the orange to diagonally match to the orange center. So I turn the top until the orange is matching to the orange center. Now that this matches, it's on the left side. So I'm going to do the same thing, but with my left hand. First, I move the left side up, then I take my left index finger and I pull the top towards me. And then I move the left side back down. Here is another white sticker that faces me in the top layer. To the side, I see I have an orange sticker. But it's right now diagonally matching to the green center. So I need to turn the top until the orange matches to the orange center. And now it's on the right side, so I'm going to move the right side up. I'm going to take my right index finger and pull the top towards me and move the right side back down. Finally, there's one more to do. I'm going to look around for a white sticker that faces me. Here it is. To the side, I have a red sticker and it is diagonally matching to the blue center. I need the red to match to the red center, so I turn the top until the red is matching to the red center. The red sticker is on the right side, so I'm going to use my right hand again. Right side up. I take my right index finger, I pull the top towards me, and then I move the right side back down. When you are done, you should have the white side all solved. You'll also notice that the sides also match. These three blue match with the blue center. These three red match with the red center. These three green match with the green center. And these three orange match with the orange center. We have solved what is one layer. There are a couple cases which might be tricky. Let's go over them. Remember I said to look for white stickers that face you in the top layer. Sometimes there are no white stickers that face you in the top layer. Instead, we have a white sticker that faces towards the ceiling, next to the yellow center. In order to correct this, 
we need to bring the white sticker so that it faces you. This white sticker right now is directly over another white sticker. To correct this, I need to turn the top until this white sticker is over a non-white slot. Now, this white is directly over an orange sticker. It's on the right side, so I'm going to turn the right side up. And instead of turning the top just once, I'm going to turn it twice. One, two. And now I move the right side back down. What that does is it moves the white sticker and places it so that it faces me. Now I can put it in like I did before. Here is a white sticker to the side is blue. This blue right now diagonally matches to the orange center, so I'm going to turn the top until the blue matches to the blue center. Now that it does, it's on the right side, so I'm going to move the right side up. I'm going to pull the top towards me once with my right index finger, and I'm going to move the right side back down. Let's look at another case. There are no white stickers facing me in the top layer, and there are no white stickers next to the yellow center. But my white side is not solved. These two pieces are wrong. I need to take them out and put them in correctly. I do this simply by doing the same thing that I did before. This is on the right side, and I like to take it out. So I move the right side up. I take my right index finger, and I pull the top towards me. And I move the right side back down. Now, this white sticker is on the top layer, and I can correct it using one of the things I have shown you before. You're done with step three, and you have the entire white face solved. We recommend that you turn off the DVD and practice. And when you're ready, feel free to move on to step four. We've done step three, and we have the white side solved. And we also have the first layer. For step four, we're going to solve the second layer. In order to do this, we want to look on the top, and we want to look for edges without yellow stickers. Here is the yellow center. This edge has blue and yellow. Because it has a yellow sticker, I'm going to ignore it for now and look for another edge. This edge here has blue and red. This red right now is on top of the green center. I need the red to be on top of the red center. So I'm going to rotate the top until the red matches to the red center. Here, the red matches to the red center. I need to decide if the edge is going to go into the left or to the right. In order to do this, I look on top, and I have a blue sticker. On the left, I have a blue center. And on the right, I have a green center. So I know this edge wants to go to the left. Because it wants to go to the left, I'm going to start with my left hand by taking my left index finger and pulling the top towards me. Then I take the left side and I move it up. And then I take my index finger again and move the top towards me. Finally, I move the left side down. These four moves actually mess up the cube. You can see that there's a white corner here. We can put the white corner into the first layer again by using what we learned in step three. Here's a white sticker. Next to it, we have a blue sticker, and it diagonally matches to the red center. So we want to turn the top until the blue matches to the blue center. Now that this matches, this is on the right side, so I'm going to use my right hand. Right side up, right next finger pulls the top towards me, and then from the right side back down. What this does is it pulls in the red-blue edge. We have to do this three more times, one for each edge. So we're going to look on top for edges without yellow stickers. Here's an edge without a yellow sticker. We have red and green. This green is on top of the blue center right now. So I'm going to turn the top until the green matches to the green center. Now that it matches, I need to decide if I want to put this edge into the left or to the right. I look on top, and I see a red sticker. On my left, I have red. And on my right, I have orange. 
So I know that this edge wants to go into the left. Because it wants to go left, I'm going to start with my left hand. With my left index finger, I'm going to pull the top towards me. I'm going to move the left side up. I'm going to take the index finger and pull the top towards me again and move the left side back down. Now I've disrupted the corner, and I need to perform the steps that I did in step three. Here's the white corner. Next to this is a red sticker, and it diagonally matches to the green center. I'm going to turn the top until the red matches the red center. And now this is on the right side, so I'm going to use my right hand. Right side goes up. Index finger pulls the top towards me. And then the right side goes down. And this pulls in the red-green edge. We've done this twice. We need to do this two more times for the two remaining edges. So let's look on top for edges without yellow stickers. This edge here has yellow and red. So I'm going to ignore it and look for another one. This one here has orange and green. But the green is on top of the blue center. So I'm going to rotate the top until the green is matching to a green center. Now we have the green matching to the green center. We have to decide if this edge wants to go to the left or to the right. In order to do this, I look on top, and I see I have an orange sticker. On my left, I have a red center. And on my right, I have an orange center. So I know this piece wants to go to the right. I begin with my right hand. My index finger pulls the top towards me. I move the right side up. I pull the top towards me again. And then I move the right side down. This has disrupted a corner, so I'm going to fix it using what I learned in step three. Here's my white corner, and to the side, I have orange. This orange is next to a green center, so I need to make the orange diagonally match to the orange center. I rotate the top until the orange diagonally matches to the orange center, and now I see that this piece is on the left. So to put it in using what I learned in step three, I move the left side up, I take my left index finger, and I pull the top towards me. And then I move the left side back down. We only have one edge left. Let's find it in the top layer. Here it is. We have orange and blue. And the blue already matches to the blue center. The orange is on my left, so this wants to go to the left. So I'm going to begin this four move sequence with my left hand. Index finger pulls the top towards me. Left side up, index finger again, left side back down. And now I have to correct the corner using what I did in step three. Here's my white corner. Next to this is orange. And the orange is diagonally matching to the blue. So I'm going to turn the top until the orange matches to the orange center. Now this is on the right. I'm going to take my right hand and perform step three. Right side up, right index finger pulls the top towards me and then the right side back down. And what this does is, now I have the entire second layer solved. There are a couple cases that might be tricky. Let's take a look at them. Here is the first case. You notice that all four edges in the top layer have yellow stickers, but the middle is not solved. This edge is flipped the wrong way. What we want to do is, we want to take it out and put it in the right way. In order to do this, we use step four again. Simply, this edge is in the right, and so I'm going to start with my right hand. I use my right index finger. I pull the top towards me. Right side goes up. Index finger again pulls the top towards me, and then the right side goes down. Now I have to correct the corner using step three. Here's the white corner. Next to it is blue, and it's next to an orange center. So I need to match the blue to a blue center, and now it's on the left. So I use my left hand. And I move the left side up. I use my left index finger. I pull the top towards me. And then I bring the left side back down. This doesn't actually solve this edge, but it's brought the edge to the top layer, where now I can put it in properly. Here is the edge, blue, orange. But the orange is on top of a red center. So I'm going to turn the top until the orange matches to the orange center. And now I'm going to put it in correctly. This piece wants to go to the right because the blue is on the right side. I start with my right hand, 
Right next finger pulls the top towards me. Right side up. Right next finger again. And now the right side back down. Now I need to correct the corner and do what I did in step three. Here's the white corner. This is blue. And it's diagonally matching to an orange. So I'm going to turn the top until the blue matches to the blue center. Now that it does, I see this match and it's on the left side. So I'm going to move the left side up, flick the top towards me with my left index finger, and move the left side back down. Here is another case which is similar to what we just saw. You'll notice on the top we have four edges, but they all have yellow stickers, and the middle layer is not solved. Let's look at the middle layer. In the middle layer, we have two pieces that are in the wrong place. In order to put them in the right place, I'm going to take one of them out, and then I'm going to put it in the right place. The second one will come out, and I will simply put that one in its right place. We're going to use the moves that we just learned. Why don't we start with the left? With my left hand, I'm going to use my left index finger and pull the top towards me. The left side goes up. The left index finger pulls the top towards me again. And now the left side goes down. And now we need to correct the corner. Here's the white. Orange does not match with the blue. And so we turn the top until it does. It's on the right side, so the right side goes up. The index finger pulls the top towards me. And the right side goes down. Now we look on top, and we have an edge without a yellow sticker. Blue and red. I can simply do what I've been doing before. Match the red to the red center. The blue wants to go to the left. Left hand, index finger, left side up, index finger, left side down. And now, correct this corner. Right side, right side up, right index finger. Now the right side back down. We have one more edge to correct. We have the blue-orange edge and we want to put it in to complete the middle layer. Here is the blue, and here is the orange, and it already matches to the orange center. The blue wants to go into the right side, so I'm going to use my right hand. First, by pulling the top towards me, right side up, top towards me again, right side down, and now I'm going to fix this corner using step three. This blue needs to match the blue center, and now it's on the left side, so I'm going to move the left side up, Index finger pulls the top towards me, and now the left side goes back down. Now that you're done with step four, and you have the first two layers solved, we recommend you shut off the DVD and practice. And when you're ready, you can move on to step five. We use notation to represent the various moves that we are going to make. What this means is that we have a letter to represent each turn of the cube, so that we can write it out for memorization. The letter U represents the upper. The letter F represents the front. The letter R represents the right. The letter L represents the left. The letter B represents the back. And the letter D represents down. If you have a single letter, it means turn that face clockwise one quarter turn. U clockwise looks like this. R clockwise looks like this. We look at the right side, and this way is clockwise. L clockwise looks like this. We look at the left side, and this way is clockwise. If you have a prime after the letter, it means you turn it counterclockwise one quarter turn. U prime means turn the top counterclockwise one quarter turn. L prime means turn the left side counterclockwise one quarter turn. R prime means turn the right side counterclockwise one quarter turn. If we have a two after the letter, it means you turn that side twice. F2 
would look like this. U2 looks like this. A series of moves written out is called an algorithm. This may sound complicated, but it's really nothing more than a recipe. The first algorithm we're going to do looks something like this. We've solved the first two layers. In order to complete step five, we need to make a cross on the yellow side. Let's try this algorithm. F, clockwise, U, clockwise, R, clockwise, U, counterclockwise, R, counterclockwise, F, counterclockwise. In order to make a yellow cross, we need to look at the top layer. I have two edges that have yellow, and I need to flip the other two. Notice my two edges are adjacent to each other. I need to make a backwards L. What that means is I need a yellow piece here in the 12 o'clock position and one here in the 9 o'clock position. In order to do this, I'm going to rotate the cube so that I have a backwards L. Now, the algorithm should give me a yellow cross. Let's try the algorithm. F, U, R, U prime, R prime, and F prime. Now you see I have a yellow cross. There are two other cases. You might not always have two yellow edges adjacent to each other. Let's look at another case. In this case, we have a yellow bar. Here, I'm just going to perform the algorithm, and it will take me to the backwards L. Let's try the algorithm. F, U, R, U prime, R prime, F prime. If I rotate the cube, now I'm ready to do the algorithm and get myself to the yellow cross. F, U, R, U prime, R prime, F prime. There's one more case. Let's take a look. Here, you see we have no yellow edges. If I do the algorithm, it will bring me to the yellow bar. From the yellow bar, I can get to the yellow backwards L, and that will take me to the cross. Let's do the algorithm to see that we actually get a yellow bar. F, U, R, U prime, R prime, F prime. Now I have a yellow bar. It actually doesn't matter from this point if I hold the bar this way or this way. So just do the algorithm, and it will take you to the yellow backwards L. Now that you're done with step five, you have a yellow cross, and you're only three steps away from completing the cube. We recommend that you shut off the DVD, practice, and when you feel comfortable, move on to step six. Now we have a yellow cross. In order to solve step six, we want to make the entire top all yellow. The first thing to look is to see how many corners have yellow stickers on them. Let's look at some examples. In this example, we have one corner that has a yellow sticker. On this cube, we have two corners with a yellow sticker. Here, we have no corners with yellow stickers on top. Here, we have three. Actually, if you have three corners, someone's probably messing with you. The only way to fix this is actually to take it apart and flip it back into place. Here, we have one corner with yellow on top. If we have one corner with yellow on top, we want it in the bottom left. 
So we turn the cube until we have the corner in the bottom left. Now we perform the algorithm. R u r prime u r u2 r prime. Here we have zero corners with yellow on top. We need to have a yellow sticker on the left on the side right here. This sticker here is blue, so I'm going to rotate the cube until the sticker in this position is yellow. Now the sticker is green, and now the sticker is yellow. Once I have the cube in this position, I'm going to perform the same algorithm. R, U, R prime, u, r, u2, r prime. And now you see I have one corner with yellow on top. I'm simply going to place this corner in the bottom left, and I'm going to do the same thing again. r, u, r prime, u, r, u2, r prime. And now my entire top is yellow. Let's look at the case when we have two corners with yellow on top. Here, we have two corners with yellow on top. It's similar to the case where we have zero corners with yellow on top, except we want a yellow sticker in front on the left here. This sticker right now is green, so I'm going to turn the cube until this sticker here is yellow. Now it's blue. It's still blue. And now it's yellow. So I'm going to perform the same algorithm. R, U, R prime, U, R, U2, R prime. Now I have one corner with yellow on top. It's in the bottom left, so I'm going to do the algorithm again. R, U, R prime, U, R, U2, R prime. You see, I still have one corner with yellow on top. Occasionally, you will need to perform this algorithm a few times. Here, we still have one corner with yellow on top. We need to put it in the bottom left. And now we're going to do the algorithm one more time. R, U, R prime, U, R, U2, R prime. You're done with step six, and you have the entire yellow face solved. You've only got two more things left to do, and you'll be able to solve the cube. We recommend that you shut off the DVD, practice, and when you're ready, move on to step seven. Now we're done with step six, and we have the entire top all yellow. What we need to do now is solve the corners on the top layer. To do that, we're going to look for two colors that match on the side. Here, my entire top is yellow, but these two stickers do not match. This is orange, and this is red. This is red, and this is green, so they don't have a match. These two are both blue, and so they match. Once we have a match, we're going to face this match away from us. And now we're going to perform the algorithm. R prime, F, R prime, B2, R, F prime, R prime, B2, R2. Now you see I have matching colors on all the sides of the corners. All I need to do now is line everything up, and I'm done with step seven. Sometimes when you get to this step, you might not have any corners that match on the sides. It turns out it doesn't matter which way we hold it, we just do the algorithm. R prime, F, R prime, B2, R, 
f prime, r prime, b2, r2. Now you see I have matching colors. I face this away from me. And I do the algorithm again. r prime, f, r prime, b2, r, f prime, r prime, b2, r2. And now all the corners match. All I need to do now is line them up with their respective sides. You're done with step seven, and you're almost done with the cube. There are only a couple things left. We recommend that you shut off the DVD and practice, and when you're ready, you can move on to step eight and complete the Rubik's Cube. We've solved all the last layer corners, so all we have left to solve are the last layer edges. Here, I have three edges that need to be solved. We're going to solve all three edges simultaneously. My red side here is complete, so I'm going to face that to the back. Notice here that this green edge in the middle wants to go towards the left. Now, we're going to do an algorithm. F2, and now I'm going to turn U towards the green side. R prime, L, F2, L prime, R, U again towards the green side, and then F2. And that solves the cube. Sometimes the edge will want to go the other way. Let's look at an example. Here, I have three edges that need to be fixed. My blue side is solved, so I'm going to face that towards the back. This edge here is orange, and it wants to go to the right. The algorithm starts the same. F2, but I'm going to do U prime towards the orange side instead. R prime, L, F2, L prime, R, U prime, towards the right again, and then F2. And that solves the cube. You might have four edges that need to be solved instead of just three. In order to solve this, we can perform the algorithm, and it will take us to a case where we only have three edges left to solve. Let's take a look. You can see here we have four edges that need to be solved. It doesn't matter which side you face towards you, and it doesn't matter which algorithm you pick. Let's try the algorithm with u. f2, u, r prime, l, f2, l prime, r, u, f2. Now you see we only have three sides that need to be solved. I'm going to face the completed blue side away from me, and I'm going to do the same thing. This red wants to go to the left, so I'm going to do u. f2, u, r prime, l, f2, l prime, r, u, and f2. Well, that's it. With a little practice, you can solve a cube no matter how anyone scrambles it. I did this.